Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how is everybody out in the internet land? It is February in Vermont. You know what that means? It's cold and snowy, and the cat is by the wood stove, and that is as things should be. Anyway, it's nice that people are here. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, today, I thought we'd talk a little about uh, encaustic, because people are often asking me about encaustic. And I'm not a real expert in it, but uh, I fake being an expert in it. And I figure I will show you the fakery that I do. So come along with me, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, but before we get going, special thanks. Special thanks to Miss Betty Sue out there, down there in Austin, Texas, taking care of all our technical needs backstage. So now come with me to the world of encaustic. Let's have the first slide up there. The first slide, that's not the first slide, however. That is the, uh, about the eighth slide. Um, this is the first slide. This is what uh, I started out with on this little demonstration. And what this is, is a about a four inch by eight inch uh, piece of gator foam, about quarter inch thick. Now gator board, it's gator board, not gator foam. Gator board is, uh, it's like foam core, except it's got a rigid gypsum surface on both sides. And it is wonderful, stable stuff. It's what I, when I'm doing plein air work, uh, I glue muslin to gator board uh, cut to the sizes that I like. And this is just a scrap piece that I had lying around. And I was messing around with uh, my squeegees, my Ettore six inch window washer squeegee. Um, so I guess that tells us what the dimension is. Since that's a six inch squeegee mark, it had some dirty watercolor water. Uh, that, so I stuck the squeegee right on there and then I pulled it down toward the bottom and it made that mark. And what I was going to do, ladies and gentlemen, was take a rather bad watercolor uh, and glue it to this piece of scrap. But then I looked at the mark and I was like, I like that mark. I think I will, we'll use that as the, as the starting point for this demonstration. So that is, that's just a squeegee watercolor mark on a piece of scrap gator board. Next slide, please. And this shows my basic uh, setup with corduroy looking for, um, in case I dropped any kibble uh, over where I was working, corduroy's studio cat shown there on the left. Um, and my encaustic setup is very simple. I've got a thick glass palette. Uh, I've got a heat gun. And I've got a chafing dish that I got at uh, the dented can. We've got, we call them dented cans up here. They're, you know, over, uh, overstock, discontinued uh, stores where they just have kind of random stuff. So I got this chafing dish. And then the large item on the right is the very, very important thing if you are working with encaustic. Uh, that large item on the right where Betty Sue is circling with the cursor, that is the exhaust fan. Uh, encaustics are beeswax and damar in pellet form. And we do have a picture of that at the tail end. I'll show you what the pellets look like. And you melt them using the chafing dish and then apply them. But the fumes are not good for you. And I, you know, being somewhat gimpy, I do not want to further risk my health in any way. I did take a workshop once in Encaustic where they, they had the temperature cranked on the chafing dishes and there was smoke in the air. They were using blow torches and there was not good ventilation. And those are not best practices, ladies and gentlemen. You wanna keep your temperature, your chafing dish at about below 250. Um, you don't want smoke. You don't want uh, the, the encaustic, the melted wax to be smoking. Um, 
If it does, yes, this the, the exhaust fan will whisk it away, but uh, it causes the encaustic to yellow. Uh, and, and encaustic can give these beautiful effects. And I'm gonna do a very simple effect today, but I did really don't want it to be, uh, I don't want a yellowish cast to it. I want it to be as kind of milky as possible. So you, there, there are the components, the, the heat gun, the chafing dish, the exhaust fan, and the studio cat. Okay, next slide, please, Betty Sue. So this shows the chafing dish with um, one of Corduroy's uh, empty cat food containers, it has one color, um, and then those two little uh, foil uh, cupcake, small cake holders have, the foreground one has some white uh, encaustic, the middle one has just clear, and I don't know what's in Corduroy's, uh, what's in Corduroy's cat food can. And in this little demo, I am just gonna use the clear encaustic. The brushes are just the chip brushes from the hardware store. They, you'll see that they leave a kind of rougher mark. Uh, I don't mind that because I, 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 I tend to melt pretty, pretty heavily after I've applied the encaustic. The, the key thing with the chip brushes is they do shed for the first couple of times you use them. Uh, but on the other hand, they are so inexpensive uh, that, that uh, I just, I use them rather than using a good quality brush because you have a different color brush for each color of encaustic. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. So that, that previous slide showed the melted encaustic. Here I'm applying the first pass of encaustic. Just right now, that's just one brush stroke going from right to left. And you can kind of see it's slightly yellowish and milky on that pass. So it's a two inch uh, or maybe two and a half inch. No, it's a two inch chip brush. Um, the Gator board is, is super white. So the encaustic has a little bit of yellowish milky quality to it. If I had overheated the encaustic, it would be way yellow. Um, but also look, if you look carefully uh, in the, the, the brush mark starts out very smooth and then it gets kind of more pocked as the, as the amount of Wax, melted wax in the brush starts to lessen as I'm drawing it across. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. Here's a close up of that. See the pocking? And so that's just melted, melted beeswax and damar in pellet form. So it's this liquid. You brush it on and it is smooth at the beginning, then it gets pocky. As the, as the amount of encaustic in the brush lessens. And you take care of problems with that. You can leave it just as a look, or you can take care of it as you will see in a minute. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. Okay, here I have applied encaustic over the whole surface. So that top brush stroke, and then, so this would have been three brush strokes over all overlapping slightly. And you see there's a real kind of lip between each of the brush strokes. There now there are ways you could I could keep putting coats of encaustic on top of this, though each time you've got to let it cool down a little bit or else the hot wax will melt the not cured wax underneath uh, and you'll just end up with a mess. But in this one I'm just going I'm not going to texture the surface at all. I'm gonna go for a smooth surface. So this is three passes of three brush strokes of hot melted wax going across the surface of this. See how it diffuses and makes the squeegee mark just kind of, kind of a little bit more hazy. It's not affecting the pigment that's down on the, um, that's, that's down on the, on the surface, but 
it it does the light is going through the encaustic bouncing against the surface then coming back out so it it gives this beautiful kind of um hazy effect but now i've got this so i've got this rough surface this is the wax is hot but it's no longer liquid this is um it it would be it would be kind of the, the consistency of like of, of unmelted paraffin is is what it really kind of feels like at this point. So it's kind of sticky. Once it is fully cured, when it is cool, when it is room temperature, it has a consistency, uh, feels like uh, kind of a soft porcelain, I would say. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. Okay, so here it is. This is this is where I'm now going to work on it. I've turned the exhaust fan so it is now going to exhaust from where I'm going to be applying the heat gun. I'm left-handed, so uh, I have it set up so the, the the air will vent out to the right and it vents directly outside. Um, this this is near a window, and there is just a an exhaust duct that goes from this exhaust fan to the outside. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. So this shows the heat gun is on high. You can see it's cherry red inside. And see how, this is how it liquefies the wax when you are working the surface. Um, see how shiny the, the wax on the left is? That is, it's in melted state. On the right, it's in solid state. That isn't a trick of lighting. That is, that is showing the difference in how the surface looks. You want, when you are applying layers of encaustic, you want it to get sweaty and liquid like that. Once this is all liquefied, actually, let's go to the next slide, Betty, so it shows it pretty well. The whole surface is now liquefied, ladies and gentlemen. And what I do is I keep the heat, I keep the heat gun going. I'm holding it above the surface and I'm circling the surface. I'm probably have the heat gun about a foot away. And once that is fully liquefied, surface tension pretty much keeps all the wax right on the surface. And it just becomes a self-leveling pool of melted wax. If you, you need to keep your uh, your your encaustic uh, in the chafing dish clean, because if bits of grit and stuff get in there, then you've got grit in your wax, and it it looks terrible uh, and shows up wherever you don't want it to. Um, so anyway, so it that is now a liquid pool, maybe a sixteenth of an inch thick a melted pool of wax. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. And there it has, it has set, I, I'm letting it cool down. Um, it is now a smooth surface on the entire thing. It looks like it's a little bit thicker on the top. That's fine, because I'm gonna be putting effects on it. Uh, but it is now like a smooth surface. However, it's not cool enough to work on yet. But we, living in Vermont, we have a nice, um, I think the next slide is a close-up. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, okay, so there's a close-up. There's now this kind of milky, diffuse layer on top of this watercolor. Um, and But it's still not cool enough to work on. And living in Vermont, we've got a good workaround for this. Next slide, Betty Sue. This is out the door of my studio. Uh, there used to be some sort of brick extension. This is an old paper mill. Um, and I just reach out the door and where the bricks have been bashed away, there are a bunch of nice little shelves. And because it's about 15 degrees outside, I just stick the uh, hot encaustic right there, and within five minutes, I have a nice cold encaustic that is ready to be worked on. Um, I see Betty Sue is answering questions. I'm not 
able to read the questions as they're as they're coming in, but I'm sure she'll throw them up on the screen as they come in. Uh, yes, the pan that's holding the foil pans is an electric frying pan. I, I call it a chafing dish, but uh, no, I do not. I have used a propane torch, but personally, I think the idea of an open flame in an art studio is a terrible idea, especially if uh, you get kind of uh, thinking about other stuff as I do. The heat gun works fine for the way I do the acoustic. Um, it's beyond my tech abilities at this time. Uh, during COVID era, I'm not going to have another person in the studio, uh, and I'm not. I am no. I am not going to set up and edit and everything. Um, these are free, and you goddamn take what you get. Um, maybe after COVID, I will do a. I will have a camera person come in, and and we will do a live, uh, a, a step by step. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. So this is the first, this is where it gets fun, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, it's just a squeegee mark. And the great, great fun is contextualizing the squeegee mark. Um, it looked to me like a landscape. So I took some of my Cobra water mixable oil and some, uh, some saf water mixable safflower oil and a little Van Dyke Brown Cobra, uh, and a little uh, rose violet on the above the squeegee line, and I just brushed them on very, 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 very lightly, and without much care at all. Um, so that is that's the brush strokes. Those are the brush strokes without any um, any manipulation to them. Next slide, please. Then I took my paper towel, my trusty paper towel, and I did a bunch of the you are so stupid technique. And I basically just, just made more subtle the, the, the brush strokes. I got rid of the overt brushiness, brushiness of those brush strokes. Um, and note how it now is starting to look like a colorized photograph. It is amazing to me that you can take something as inexpressive as a squeegee mark on a piece of, of uh, gator board. And just by adding contextual color and getting your values relatively accurate on those simple brush strokes, it becomes a colorized landscape. Next slide, please, Betty Sue. So, Added a little a little blue in the sky. That's just some cerulean blue. Just a brush stroke on that. You know what I like best about that cerulean blue is on the upper left of that, it was the same brush that I put the Van Dyke Brown on with. And it it let, there's a ghost of the Van Dyke Brown in the upper left-hand corner of that. And I think that ties the sky to the earth. Um, I liked having it be just very, very, the minimal amount of color that I could possibly add to try to have it evoke landscape. Um, the oil in the safflower oil interacts slightly with the encaustic surface. And so it becomes, it's, it's tacky, but it really feels like it's 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 on top of it doesn't go, doesn't really penetrate into the encaustic. I could wipe that all clear very easily, but it does really join the surface. It does not feel I could not like take my fingernail once it's dried and scrape the paint off easily. Um, I'm not using any water. In the, in, cost, in the in the water mixable oil at this time. It's just out of the tube thickness and safflower oil. Um, next slide, please, Betty Sue. So this is the pellet the, the, in the cat food container there. That is the pelletized, uh, it's, it, you get it from a company called RNF and it is, it's beeswax and Damar in pellets. I buy a 10 pound bag. 
um, and that's what you melt down. So it takes about 15 minutes to melt the uh, the pellets into being hot, a nice hot, the hot wax, but less than 250 degrees. You can get it to go faster and higher, but that's going to yellow and cause more fumes. Um, if 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 I lived in Arizona, I would not want my encaustics uh, in direct sunlight. I live in Vermont. Uh, I do not mind if the encaustics get in direct sun sunlight. They are super, super stable at reasonable temperatures. Um, I have never encountered an encaustic sagging, <laughs> hanging on a wall and then starting to sag. Uh, from heat, though I suppose it, it would be theoretically possible. Um, so anyway, there, there are so many things you can do with encaustic. And if I actually did do a video video, I would, uh, I would, I could, I could certainly show how you lay, you can do multiple, multiple layers and then scrape back with a razor blade or with sculpting tools. You can carve into it. You can do all sorts of things, but what I've been doing of late is using it as kind of a painting surface, uh, as a barrier. I'm, I'm very interested in taking my watercolors, which I would glue to uh, glue to gator board with um, acrylic transfer binder, um, let that dry thoroughly overnight, and then do encaustic on top of on top of the uh, watercolor and then do some manipulation on top of that. The, th the, the question I'm wrestling with is with watercolor. Watercolor traditionally uh, sells for a lower price than oil paintings, but it's so expensive to frame because you've got to frame it, you've got to cut a mat and put it behind glass. Uh, and by doing these encaustics, I eliminate that need. I also really like the effect itself. The one thing I did want to say about these, um, these, these, the, the little blocks, those are blocks of concentrated pigment. And what you do is, as I said, you have a little tin of each different color and you just stick the, the blocks of pigment in there. And depending on the amount of the pelletized encaustic pellets that you put in there with it, that gives you the intensity of pigment color. Think of the encaustic as being the equivalent of your paint thinner. You know, it's it is it's what you are thinning that pigment with. So it's painting basically with hot wax. Next next slide, please, Betty Sue. So this is this is the piece as it as it is now, um, and I just I really like um, I really like the evocativeness of this. And I titled it, This Was a Battlefield. And I titled it, This Was a Battlefield for a couple of reasons. One, I designed a record cover uh, two decades ago for Richard Schindel uh, called Somewhere Near Patterson. And he's out in a field uh, not unlike this one. Uh, and I, my recollection is that it was the photo shoot was in Virginia, and it was at the site of uh, of a Civil War battle. Two, when I ow, I have a cat who wants attention. Ow. Um, two, when I was uh, in my twenties, I bought a colorized photograph that used basically this palette, uh, and it was called. My, fa my father's field was once the sea. my father's farm was once the sea, and three, uh, it evoked that it evoked in me uh, thinking of a song by a woman named Whit Hill, uh, and she did an album of songs inspired by metal detecting. She's a metal detector. The album is called "I Dug It Up," which is a very funny song, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but there is a song on this album called This Was a Battlefield, and this piece evokes that song for me. Um, and it's her, her 
the conceit of the song is the dichotomy between here she is digging up things in this peaceful, this peaceful field, uh, and to think that a hundred years ago people were, a hundred and fifty years ago people were dying there. Um, anyway, so that's a very oh oh, and so what I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to give away two copies of Whit Hills. I dug it up with with this was a battlefield in there. Just be just leave a comment and I will choose uh, a couple of people and you'll get a little message from me. Um, so that's a very, very quick overview of how I mess around with encaustics. Yes, do visit hunterstudio.com and click on paint and go to the paintings tab and then there's a sub tab for encaustics and it has a whole bunch of different encaustics that I've done. So I hope you found that interesting. Sorry if I was a bit incoherent. The cat was clawing at my leg the whole time. Um, Charlotte says, I started drawing every week with hard pencil. The best art advice you've received. Thank you. Yes, I do see it, Charlotte. Not only do I see it, I repeat it. All right. Thank you all so much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, don't know who we've got next week, uh, but I think the week after that, my friend Matt Barber Kennedy, who's a wonderful, wonderful painter from, uh, he's a watercolorist from Chicago. Uh, he's, he's, sometimes he looks like David Bowie and sometimes he looks like Steve Bannon. I don't know what we're gonna get, um, but he's a, he does great work. Uh, and we, we got many exciting, exciting shows coming up. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Take good care and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.